QR codes have been really popular lately. Thanks to the pandemic, restaurants have been finding alternatives to physical menus, and QR codes are everywhere. After seeing all these codes, I was inspired to make a web app to turn images into QR codes myself. As a bit of background on QR codes, they were first created in 1994 by Masahiro Hara, who was apparently inspired by the Japanese game Go. They were mainly used by the company Denso Wave, which Masahiro worked at, to track vehicles. Over time, people got more used to them and they grew in popularity in parallel with the development and widespread utilization of smartphones. Recently, due to the pandemic, QR code menus allow restaurants and customers to stay safe and reduce the spread of germs. Another really cool use of QR codes include these ones that are placed on headstones. They lead to virtual grave sites honoring the deceased. So what is a QR code? Well, the simplest definition is that a QR code is a square grid of black and white pixels that contain information, oftentimes a URL. Then, each part of the QR code has a different meaning. These three corners are used by your phone to find the QR code's position. These parts in red are formatting information, and the parts in blue are version information. In green, there's a quiet zone which makes it easier for cameras to find the codes. Then, based off the version and the formatting, the QR code can be read like this, with each chunk representing different characters or being useful for error correction. In my free time, I've been working on a few fun projects lately, but the idea of QR codes kind of got stuck in my mind. I wanted to make some kind of art that involves QR codes. As with any project, the first step is to see what's out there. I ended up finding some cool artwork that contains valid QR codes. Here's a bunch of the artwork. Coming from a research background, I felt a strong need to categorize these pieces based on the property of QR codes that makes each of them possible. The first category I came up with is based on Reed Solomon error correction, which you can read about here. Error correction is actually a really cool topic. Uh, I'm not gonna get into it here, but it's been applied to improve data storage, the internet, and even deep space telecommunications. Error correction is one of the biggest differences between QR codes and barcodes. The fact that QR codes can be robust up to a 30% error rate means that even if a QR code on a package or a poster is damaged, it's still readable, which is pretty remarkable. If you pause the video, you can test this out here with a few fake damaged QR codes. This error correction means that all of these QR codes we saw previously are thanks to error correction. You can hide a large portion of the QR code to make these kind of artistic codes. To make these, just use a QR code generator with high error correction, and then use any image editor to paste another image on top, and then just make sure it still scans with your phone and just keep moving around if it doesn't. The second category is additive, where you can add meaningless bits or other images around the QR code itself. Here are a few examples. For this Apple one, it doesn't even need a quiet zone. These ones, which I really enjoy, are made by artist Yi Ying Liu, and they link to a website with more information about the project and the artist. The third category is based on transformations to the squares in the QR code. A really cool property of QR codes is that they don't need to be squares, and they don't actually need to be black and white. In the process of doing this research, I found this website, QR Beautify, which is in Chinese, um, but their website takes in QR codes and outputs a lot of really pretty QR codes. Looking at a few of these made me realize that we can go even further. We can use these tiny QR code squares, like so, and add images to the backgrounds, which are pretty flexible. So, last weekend, I made a website in JavaScript to do so. Here's a demo. All you have to do is choose an image, preferably a square one, and add a URL. Then, you can play around with a few different parameters. Smaller bits are harder to read, but make your image clearer, and vice versa for larger bits. Error correction will increase the size of the code, and having a border can be helpful, depending on how you plan to use the QR code. And that's pretty much it. Feel free to use this website to your heart's desire. Uh, two notes of caution are one, that I didn't do much testing, so it works on my MacBook, but I'm not sure it will work on any operating system browser combo. And two, QR code scanners are all different, so I make no guarantees that your scanner will work with my QR codes. In conclusion, this project was a fun learning experience for me. Although when I started the project, I wasn't quite sure what direction I was planning to take, I am pretty happy with the end result. Since I wasn't completely sure what direction this project was going to take, I didn't do the best job of finding out if there are any pre-existing tools. It turns out there actually is a website that accomplishes a pretty similar goal called visuallead.com. I don't think their service is free, although their tool can do a few more things than mine, and vice versa. If you like this project, please like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I do these projects in my free time and sometimes spend a bit of money on them, despite being a starving grad student. I don't have a Patreon or anything like that, so if you'd like to support me, I'd get a big kick out of it if you printed out this QR code, linked in the comments, and posted it around random places to help advertise my video.